All right, back for this week's portion of Knights College. We finished chapter two, and I showed a brief little bit of chapter three. So today we're officially going to start chapter three, the invincible upperclassmen. It's not my favorite chapter because it's not chapter four. <laughs> but I do, I, do, I do like the character. We, we're gonna get introduced to a new guy if you haven't seen the previous one. Now, for today's lecture, Professor Cilio begins his lecture as he always does. With today being particularly warm as well as the sunshine streaming in from the window softly illuminating the room, we all start nodding off. The more I try to get myself to listen to the lecture, the heavier my eyelids get. Just when it sounds like the professor's voice is fading away, my ears detect a loud noise. <laughs> professor Cilio! I, Julius, have returned! <laughs> A large man I have never seen before slams open the lecture hall door and greets the professor as he enters. So you have. Welcome back. How was your mission? Did you receive any injuries? Not at all! All in the day's work! <laughs> really? I'm happy to hear that. So, what do you need? Why are you here? Interrupting my class. I just stopped by on my way back to see this year's freshman! Ah, if that's the case, then allow me to introduce you. Please do! Everyone, this is Julius. He is a student here who is two years above you. Don't be afraid to talk to me, though. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, J Julius, I was in the middle of a lecture. Oh, excuse me. I hate that I hit that so. <laughs> I hate that I hit that so well. <laughs> With his greeting finished, Julius leaves the room. My apologies for the interruption. Even I didn't know he was returning today. Returning. Where did he go? Right now, you only have lectures and training on campus, but starting in your second year, you will have many off-campus activities. If I recall correctly, he was acting as an... as an... That's gonna keep throwing me off. He was acting as a professor's assistant who was assigned to be in charge of a certain EP case. What? A student was in charge? It's more like a hands-on learning experience. We assess how knights will respond to actual incidents by sending them outside the campus to learn in the field. I see. But for now, you have your lectures and training. Let's stay focused on those. Hmm. I never really realized it, but we do have upperclassmen too, don't we? I haven't really seen them so the thought had never crossed my mind. Maybe there's one who can give me advice on how to get better. I should look when I have time. <clears throat> Listen up! Today is target practice! It's not the Derek voice. Until now, we've been doing almost nothing but fencing. But this time, we'll be introduced to guns. Training pistols have been prepared for us. Targets have been stuck into the ground. It seems we'll be practicing by shooting them. As you all know, knights mainly use swords. That's because we want to avoid as many accidental shootings as possible. Guns are an effective way to kill, but even the slightest miss could result in a dead civilian. I'm sure you've all heard about it from Celio. But because knights travel to other countries, we gotta have the trust of civilians. If your shooting ends up with a civilian if your shooting ends up with civilian casualties, the public outcry will make crossing borders a pain in the ass for you. 
In almost all cases, you will take down criminals by hand or sword. Always remember that. That said, lots of criminals use guns. A sword usually won't do much good against them. Unless you somehow know how to block bullets. That's why you're all going to learn how to handle one. That way you'll be able to escape if, with your lives if it comes down to it. But some countries ban the use of guns. In the end, your own strength is what's most important. After his talk, Professor Derek loads rubber training bullets into each of our guns and we get ready to try them out. I take a shot at a person-shaped target on the training grounds, then another. It's harder than I expected and none of my bullets hit. You are reminding me of my virtual cop experience. <sighs> on the other hand, all of Theo's bullets hit dead center. It seems swords aren't the only thing he excels at. Hmm. <laughs> Child's play. Is there anything this guy can't do? Yes! I hit it again! Huh? <laughs> but against all expectations, someone else's bullets do the same. They're Oscars of all people. You're incredible! I never knew you had it in you! It's probably just luck, but hitting the target sure does feel nice. There's no way you can get out, get all of them by luck. Are you sure you've never done this before? You're a natural. A natural? Well, Oscar, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> Oscar and I were both terrible at fencing, so it's a little frustrating that he already, he's already this good with guns. Ah, I just remembered. I got some good news for you guys today. Good news. That's right. Starting today, you're now allowed to leave campus. We can? Uh, oh, oops. <laughs> I, messed, I messed that voice up. Wait, what? I'm sure you all have gotten used to living here by this point. Now you can leave campus and walk around the island all you want. Yes! I can go to the bookstore. But couldn't you already order books whenever you want? Are you kidding? Books must be picked out in person. Don't be stupid. G calm down. <laughs> Just behave yourselves, okay? Got it. Going out, huh? I should try going for a walk in my free time. The place card would pop up, but I already got it before. <laughs> Now then, where should I go? Hmm. I need to knock this one out right away because this is going to be a rough one. <coughs> hmm. Oh, Julius. I unexpectedly find Julius in the bathroom. Looks like he's just about to pee. Oh, you're, uh... I'm Brandon. Right, Brandon. Sorry, I've become quite forgetful lately. But I never told you my name before. Just a moment, please. I'll be done in no time. Don't worry, I'm not in a rush. Take your time. Dude, it's like, it's like a multi-person bathroom. No! It would be shameful for a night to go too long and make you wait! Ugh. Make haste, my ah! oh, god! Oh my god, help me. Uh. Make haste, my ah! Don't let my fellow pupil down! A strange. What a strange person. Julius, who had just finished urinating at full blast, shakes the last drops up out of himself and flies off and gets all over the surrounding area. Listen, Brandon, a knight must always make sure to shake the drops. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> a knight must always make sure to shake the drops out 
Shake it until there aren't any left. You won't look your best with leftover drops staining your crotch. No! <laughs> but the stains you left everywhere else are okay. <sighs> I'm gonna have to censor this shit, aren't I? <laughs> His cock is on display during this whole lecture. Honestly, I wasn't sure where to look. Right then! All done! Sorry to keep you waiting. Let us now enjoy a nice conversation. But I just came here to go to the bathroom. Oh, I got I gotta knock these out. I gotta knock it out. Oh. <laughs> um, sorry, but I have to go too. What? Oh, my apologies for getting in your way. Don't mind me. Go on. He's making this awkward. When I get in front of the urinal, Julius stands behind me. Uh, um. Don't worry. I'm just doing my duty as your upperclassman. I'm not gonna. He reaches his arms around me and pulls my zipper down. What are you doing? What are you doing? Be quiet and don't move. He takes my Make me sick. Stop. 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 Make me like sick. <laughs> from the open zipper and points it down. Now, <laughs> it's killing me. This is killing me. He takes my Make me sick. From the open zipper and points it towards the urinal. Now, give it all you got. I can't do it like this. I'm too nervous to go. What? You're surprisingly sensitive. Who wouldn't be in this situation? <laughs> I'm just having a bit of fun with you. Take no offense. He was teasing me? I thought I was yet another weird urban culture thing. <laughs> and we got the card. <laughs> you got the card that will get this video demonetized. You got the demonetization card. <clears throat> Where have you been, Julius? In another country, off camp for off campus activities. I just got back from a four month stay there. Off campus activities? Another country? Don't you know? Once you've reached your second year at Knights College, you'll start participating in off campus activities. Oh, yeah, I think Professor Silio did mention something like that. What exactly do you do for those? You mainly accompany a Professor Knight and learn how to do investigations as you assist them. Really? What kind of case were you helping with? Serial killings! What? I was in a city where several bodies were discovered with their heads twisted off. Creepy. I worked on an, I worked on the investigation with a professor, and wouldn't you know it, the crimes were committed with EP. It's okay for students to get involved with such dangerous cases. No, oh, uh, naturally, not all students will. Only capable students, such as myself, are called upon specifically for things like that. <laughs> He's full of confidence. So, what happened to the culprit? Once I knew his true identity, he was all mine. I arrested him. What? You did? My EP is suited for controlling people. The professor knew he could... could eh. The professor knew he could count on it and ask me to help. So he has an EP too? I wonder what it's like. Ask Professor Cilio about office... <laughs> oh... I gotta, get, I, got, I gotta finish this one. <laughs> Ask Professor Cilio for... Oh, come on. <sighs> Ask Professor Cilio about off-campus activities. If you want to learn more, he's in charge of assigning cases. I'll do that. Uh, second best guy. To me. Anyway. 
Well, second or third best, it's arguable. Julius. He's got such a strong build. It's like he's just bursting with energy. I don't think just being in a higher grade is what makes him seem so mature. Maybe it's his confidence? What's wrong, Brandon? Is there something on my face? Or could it be you want to see more of this? <laughs> he reaches down to open his zipper again. N no, not that. I was just thinking about how you're so confident. It's only natural. A knight must be a role model for the people. It would be this. It would be a disgrace for a knight to walk around with his head hanging low. You must always throw your chest out with pride if you want to be one. Uh, okay. A knight. Huh? This guy is exactly how I picture one. He already sees himself simply as a knight. Not one in training or a student. I guess what I mean is, he's my ideal image of how a knight should be. You might want to turn your standards a bit higher. <laughs> I mean, considering just considering this interaction. <laughs> and this boldness. It sort of reminds me of Professor Derek. I think I've got a better idea of what Julius is like now. Okay. Oh, thank God I'm out of that. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> well, I should get going. See you later, Brandon. Oh, thank God I'm out of that. I'm gonna have to censor the fuck out of this one. Oh, great, I have to censor that too. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to censor the hell out of that. Oh... Oh, thank God. Professor Derek! Julius! He got my video demonetized! Help me! <sighs> oh, Professor Derek! God, I got, I got a headache. I have a headache. It's not from this. I've been having a headache like since. Like, I've been having a headache all night. I'll get over it. It's probably just the lighting. Um, <clears throat> gotta keep going now. Give me, like, give me a second. Okay, I'm back. Oh. Yeah. I think it's something to do with my glasses and how the light reflects in them or something. I don't know. Oh, anyway. Hey, Brandon. Are you doing some shopping? I'm a bit hungry. I know. Since we're here, why don't we grab a bite to eat? My treat. Really? Thank you. I'm broke. Oh yeah, if I didn't get the Sully on Julius, I would have nothing to talk about. <laughs> huh, I've never eaten at the canteen before. Is there something you recommend? There is. How about I buy it for you? Sounds good. Professor Derek goes and picks something out, then pays for it. Here. What is this? What he got for me is what looks like sausage cut into slices with some kind of white sauce on top. If that isn't an innuendo. This is called Camel Worst. Never heard of it. Is it is this a sausage? Yep. It's a sausage with a certain kind of sauce. It was introduced by someone called Camel. 
I would say Camille, but Camille has like two L's and an E. <laughs> Hence the name Camel Worst. It, it looks amazing. Go on, try it before it gets cold. Don't mind if I do. I throw a piece of it into my mouth. Then juices from the piping hot sausage and the mild white sauce combine, creating a harmoniously savory flavor. That's so good. Isn't it? This is a traditional <clears throat> This is a traditional dish from Harsh Rakes. What? From Harsh Rakes? The white sauce on top is made from goat's milk. Goats? Unlike the sprawling plains we have here in Frontel, Harsh Rakes is a mountainous country. They've got more goats grazing there than cows. Wow. And sausage is made from lamb, too. Different terrains mean different livestock, and different livestock means different food. That flavor is something that only that could only come from harsh range. I wonder if how I wonder if there's a ton of people that are gonna notice that my dick that my data rate voice is always changing every single video. Makes sense. Different types of cooking comes from different countries. Right. Even a country with someone like Theo as its prince can make food this damn good. You can't judge a country just on just one thing, just like people. They have lots of different sides to it. I know. <laughs> I know, Professor. I believe even Theo has things I like to like about him. Doesn't matter how he acts, I won't hate his whole country just because of him. You be the first. <laughs> you be the first not to hate somebody like that, though. <laughs> really? I guess you already understand. I'll stay out of your business, then. But I'm glad you introduced me to his country's food. Good. Eat your fill and get stronger. Rank Persona, rank up. <laughs> hmm. Come to think of it, you're always open to talk to me, but it doesn't seem like I get to talk to Professor Celio that much. He prefers to keep to himself. He prefers to keep to himself. Sorry, don't you think there should be some distance between professors and students? Is he distant even with you? Well, it's not like we hate each other's guts. I think we get along just fine, but it still kind of feels like he's distant. When it comes down to it, maybe even on, maybe even I only know what he's like on the outside. Hmm. All that junk he leaves laying around in his room, maybe that's the key to getting to know him. Did you say junk? There's a lot of weird stuff piled in, piled up in there. You'd think you'd be a neat freak with a spotless room, but no, nope, it's a total trash heap. Maybe it means a lot to him in, in the same way the sea does to me. Professor Cilio's room is covered in junk. Now this is the key for one of the scenes here, <laughs> for a com for upcoming scene. What do you think of Julius? What do you think of him? Hmm, he's damn strong. Strong? Even you think so? I'm not the only one. I think any I don't think anyone's beaten him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Really? He's that good of a fencer? It's not that he's good at it. He just has an EP that lets him cheat. Cheat. Well, it's not a good idea to go blabbering on about someone else's EP. If you really want to know, go ask Julius yourself. Okay. An EP that lets him cheat. What kind of EP is that? Oh, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, uh, <clears throat> if you'll excuse me, Professor Derek. 
Alright, see you later. Don't forget your training. I won't. Now, nah, babe, where should I go? Oh, well, if we're coming in from the store, I would say that we're going to the passageway. No, oh, it's Oscar. Hey, Brandon. What's going on? You're just standing there. Hmm? Oh, I guess I am. Something seems off. I don't have that one yet! I think I have to... Oh, I know. Okay. We'll cover it. If I unlock it in the other one. Oh, yeah! Remember the secret passage I told you about? Hmm? Oh, the path to the beach you and Grant found? That's right. You sure do spend a lot of time there. Professors will be mad if they find out. That makes it kind of exciting. I beg to differ. Really? You don't want to try going there? No. You should be more adventurous. You both found it, so you should be the ones going there. Are you just pouting because we didn't ask you to come with us? N not really. Don't blame us. You were passed out on your bed. I told you, I'm not pouting. Should have seemed like it. You're acting kind of weird. What? I don't think I am. I've seen people act like this before. You know, I haven't seen that people act like this before, you know. I could tell they were hiding something. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not hiding anything. Yeah, right. So, you're not going to tell me, huh? And here, I thought we were friends. But what? What's gotten into you all of a sudden? I told you I... But if we are friends, you tell me. Mm, fine. I'll tell you. Now stop talking like that. I was right. You are hiding something. It's not like I was trying to. It's just that it's so ridiculous. Hmm? <clears throat> Please don't laugh. Yesterday, I saw a ghost. A ghost. When I got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, there was this floating thing. Are you serious? Are you serious? It's true! I was shocked! When I tried following it, it seemed to be going to the beach. But it was gone when I got there. You followed it. Weren't you scared? Of course I was! But it seemed like a good writing material. He's braver than I thought. <laughs> Besides, there was something about it that didn't seem too scary. Why? Who knows? That's just the impression. That's just the impression I got. Mm -hmm. You got witness. <laughs> oh yeah, the eight unlocks for him. The ghost is in the knight's college. So does that mean it's the spirit of a knight? Maybe it's the spirit of a student who failed to become one. Oh, that could be possible. He was racked with despair over not being able to become a knight no matter how hard he tried. If that's the case, maybe he threw himself into the sea. It's sad when you think of it like that. Well, that's just a guess. I'm so far behind when it comes to things like fencing, so I can relate. You wouldn't kill yourself, would you? You know you can talk to us when things get tough, right? Don't worry. Us men of the sea have strong hearts. It's not like jumping into the ocean would kill you anyways, right? I don't know about that. Okay. Bye, Oscar. Alright, see you later.
Grant's in the rear garden. Looks like he's sleeping. Wow, it's nice and shady here, and I don't blame him. Maybe I should play a little prank on him. I try waking him up by putting my hands under his arms and squeezing his chest. However, Grant is sound asleep and shows absolutely no signs of opening his eyes. What a heavy sleeper. My sense of mischief escalates and I lightly touch part of his pants on the part of <laughs> WHY?! My sense of mischief escalates and I lightly touch the part of his pants on top of his pants. I can feel the soft voluptuous sensation on my palm, but Grant continues to snore. He's not waking up. I continue rubbing the pants off, but it has a definite mat. STOP! I've already got the censor Julius! After doing that for a while, I no longer hear his snores. Grant, are you awake? <clears throat> what? What are you doing? Uh, I wanted to wake you up. Don't you have a better way of doing that? Grant spots my hand away as he says that. Ugh, I slept like a rock. Good morning, Grant. Damn it, if you were gonna wake me up, you should have at least waited until free time was over. It would have been too late by that point. Besides, isn't this a place where you should be reading? A place for reading? I'm sure they won't mind if I use this for, use it for naps too. I guess so. It certainly is comfortable. This place being a reading space is something me and Oscar came up with. What? Why bother going outside to read? It feels nice to read when the sun is shining. That put me to sleep in an instant. You were just doing that. You want to take a nap too? Nah, I wouldn't be able to get sleep later tonight. I could take a nap and still get a good night's sleep. He does it during lectures too. Just how many hours of sleep does this guy get? Well, I guess reading ain't so bad sometime. I know, I'll go to the library later. I haven't been there yet. Oh, they have one of those here? You didn't read the facilities guide? Uh, uh, <clears throat> you didn't read the facilities guide, did you? S sorry. Make sure you do. You're wasting your time here if you aren't using them. I'd rather not hear that from the guy who sleeps during lectures. Have you been making sure to take baths lately? What, what are you, my dad? My dad? <laughs> his parents ask him <laughs> that too. I at least take showers after training. Don't make me sound like a slob. I don't think that's enough though. For example, let's say you're getting in the mood with someone you like. Huh? Your bodies get closer and closer. Your hearts are pounding. Then you go in for the kiss. With the, two of, with the two of your faces together, your lips are mere inches apart. But then, suddenly they say, You're kind of stinky. You're kind of stinky, aren't you? <laughs> like hell, that's gonna happen. But it could. Let's try it then. Huh? <laughs> Grant forcibly pulls me towards him, then presses me up against one of the trees in the garden. Uh, hey! He gradually brings his face closer to mine. My heart starts beating faster. Wait, is he serious? In this situation, what would you say to me? Uh, wait! I quickly squeeze my eyes shut in anticipation of the incoming kiss. But for some reason, our lips never meet. Ha! I totally could have if I wanted to. Uh, oh. Why is your heart pounding, Brandon? Sh sh shut up! Damn it! Finish what you started.
Oh yeah, Oscar said he saw a ghost. Huh? A ghost? He said it was walking to the beach or something. A walking ghost? Sure sounds like it. But then again, maybe it was flying? You believe that crap? Hey, I'm just telling you what he said. There's no such thing as ghost. He should just punch it. I'm pretty sure you can't punch ghost. Depends on the depends on the universe. That's just what people say. You'll know as soon as you give it a good jab. And what if you can't? Kick it. <laughs> oh. Later, Grant. I gotta go off and censor half this shit now. <laughs> Bye! I'm going back to sleep. How much of the day does he spend sleeping? Okay, so... I have to put, I have to put this out there. And this is one of those things I'm not exactly fond of for this visual novel. When you replay, if you come back to replay the chapters, you don't get the introduction bit. You don't get the introduction scenes. If like you, if like say you restarted the chapter and you come back to like an area, you don't get the introduction scenes. It kind of just skips and you get the choices. So I forgot that there was those conversations. I forgot about half of those conversations were in the story or in the story. Which is why, <laughs> which is why I was like, oh crap. <laughs> oh well. I guess that's why it's nice to like replay it from the beginning because you do, because I do miss out on the introductions. dinner. Hey, you want to go out for a walk tonight after dinner? During our meal, Grant proposed as an idea. Can we go out at night too? He didn't say we couldn't, right? No, he didn't, but shouldn't we ask him first, just in case? Come on, what if he says no? Then we won't be able to. So you're saying we aren't doing anything wrong since he forgot to mention it? Exactly! Is all you know how to do is weasel your way out of things? I wouldn't put it like that! But Grant is right. <laughs> you know. But Grant is right, you know. If we follow exactly what Professor Derek said, then we should be allowed to be out until bedtime. See? Not you two. Come on, let's give it a try, okay? Uh, whatever, I'll, it'll be your fault if we get yelled at. So it was decided that we would go out for <laughs> her night on the island after dinner. Later we sneak out of Knights College and go to one of the bars that's open on the island. How'd it go, Grant? It's no good. They say they don't serve alcohol to Knights College students. Uh. Maybe that's why we're allowed to go out at night. Yeah, it seems like they got all their bases covered. Well, we're already here. Why don't we just enjoy it as much as we can without drinking? Good idea. Uh, I need a drink! We eventually give up on drinking and engage in conversation with soft drinks and ham. That reminds me, what's your family like, Grant? What kind of boring question is that? Then let me rephrase that. What do your parents do? They're both archaeologists. Uh, archaeologists? How oh, unexpected. What were you expecting? That you were raised by animals in the jungle or something? Hell no! I just wasn't expecting your parents to be so intellectual. You guys don't hold back, do you? Well, to be honest, they were pretty hands-off. 
They were always traveling overseas for dig sites and conferences. My nanny was more like a parent to me. A nanny? What's, what's that? Babysitter. Someone who raises kids for bu busy parents. Wow. Did you miss them when you weren't... Did you miss them when you, you were at... <clears throat> Did you miss them when you were at home? I feel like that should say... Did you miss them when they were at home? Whatever. <sighs> definitely. When I was little. Definitely when I was little. Sometimes they were busy with work. They were busy with work even when they were at home. I play a ton of pranks on them to get their attention. Ah, we finally got a glimpse of the origins of Grant. It all makes sense now. Shut up! After chatting at the bar for a while, we returned to the Knights College. Even though we couldn't order alcohol, it was still a nice change of scenery. We should stop there once again, whenever we're in the mood for something different. I wonder if I should do day two and three. I might be able to squeeze it in. I might. So, who should I t Let's see. <sighs> demonetization? <laughs> Do we go further into the demonetization? <laughs> well, I did give you guys the other one. I did give you guys Lord Shet. And I said that would be the only one, and I should try and keep to my word, so I don't think you guys will be seeing this, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure now. I think I kind of want to save it, because then that will make you guys play the game yourself. Instead of having me do it. Alright, I'm just going to do... Well, Julius. And I'd like to talk to Julius, but is it even okay to invite him? But his card appeared. I guess it won't hurt to try. When I lived in the country, I never imagined being out in the world like that. The thought never even crossed my mind. Another tiring day. Good night, Grant. Now, who's ready for another spirited lecture? We've got a lot to cover. Why do we need more EP users in the first place? I'm sure many of you have been wondering this. The higher the number of people using such incomprehensible powers rises, the more things get out of control and bring chaos to society. We all know that. But as a country, we still need a certain number of people who can use EPs. I will now explain why. First, it's not widely known. But, there have been numerous concerning incidents occurring throughout the world lately. Ordinary people are suddenly awakening their EPs and their powers are causing problems. Why? EP spots like this college are popping up all around the world. Most ordinary people walk into them unaware, thus accidentally awakening their EP. I see. However, not just anyone can freely walk into an EP spot. A majority of cases like civilians entering them without knowing ends with fatalities. What? What? <laughs> fatalities? <laughs> Professor Cilio gives a detailed explanation about tolerance. <laughs> I heard him tell Theo before. <laughs> no, Professor Cilio gives a de detailed explanation about the tolerance I heard him tell Theo before. Now, knowing the danger, most, stu most students are baffled. Theo and I are the only ones who listen in silence. 
And this is why unexplained death. This is why unexplained deaths have been on the rise these days. A great number of EP spots appear are appearing. We dispatch our knights to seal them off, as well as identify those who have had their EPs awakened. What do you do with those who have? Take them into custody before they can cause any trouble or accidents. And what if that has already happened? That depends on the circumstances of the case. There are a wide range of phenomena caused by EP. The police and other authorities are not capable of dealing with all of them. This is what EP investigation experts, in other words, us knights, are needed for. For any troubles or accidents caused by EP, we try to have a knight with the most suitable EP for the situation involved in the response. If one were to say, if one were to say there won't always be a knight available in their own country, that would be completely false. Personnel who are highly specialized in handling EP are shared across borders for this reason. We don't want the number of EP users to keep increasing, but whether we like it or not, there are still events happening all around the world. So we are taking steps to expand the number of knights per capita. And that, my students, is the reason why knights are, are the select few who are given such strong international power. I hope you all look forward to the many different countries you will visit for your nightly duties. Select few, huh? I guess I'm also a part of that few now, too. Ah, oh, and there's yelling in the other room. For some reason, Julius is here for today's training. Hmm, you you got quite the group here, Professor Derek. Uh, his constant interruptions from the sidelines seem to be making things quite difficult for the professor. <laughs> By the way, why doesn't that student participate? He spots Theo standing alone in the corner. Hmm. Ah, Theo? He's just a little too strong for the rest, so I keep him in so I keep an eye on him while I do some one-on-one -on -one training. <clears throat> I read that wrong. Ah, Theo? He's just a little too strong for the rest, so I have to keep an eye on things while I do some one-on-one -on -one training. So I I read it wrong again! <laughs> ah, Theo? He's just a little too strong for the rest. So I have him keep an eye on things while I do some one-on-one -on -one training. That still doesn't sound right, but I'll roll with it. Oh, he's so good he doesn't have to participate? Just like me! That's because no one has a chance at beating you. <laughs> hey, Julius, are you getting bored just sitting there and watching? No, seeing them work their tails off is more enjoyable than I thought it'd be. Aw, oh, come on. Why don't you and Theo have a little match? Hmm? He might be too skilled for everyone else, but you can handle him, right? If it's all right with him, then I would be more than happy to. What do you say? Theo, was it? Hmm. <laughs> You saved me the trouble of having to ask. I was just wondering how to get you to show me your true power. <laughs> you got guts! Okay, let's do this. Julius and Theo face each other and the rest of us gather around to watch. A showdown between Theo, the best of our group, and Julius, who's obviously strong. Everyone's excited to see just how this will go. So, who do you think will win? Julius! Oh god, that was horrible. Ju <laughs> Why? He's our upperclassman, so he has to be strong, right? Isn't that just wishful thinking? You just want Theo to lose, don't you? After all, he's the one who beat you to a pulp. Shut up! That's not why! I'm starting to lose it. 
No, oh, looks like they're starting. They stare each other down for a moment. Then it's Theo who makes the first move. Unlike with Grant, he goes all out right at the beginning, flying forward like an arrow and taking a swipe at Julius. But then... Theo! Halt! <laughs> as soon as Julius shouts, Theo abruptly stops moving. Then, without a second thought, Julius pins Theo's body down and has him restrained in no time at all. What? Ha! Victory! Enough! Julius wins! Y you! What did you do? I'm sure you already know all about EPs, right? Well, this is mine! I can stop people with a call to their name! No matter how strong they are, they won't be able to move! <laughs> this can't be! What the hell? There's no way to beat him then, is there? It really is cheating. Finally understand what Professor Derek was talking about. I could already tell he was really strong with all those muscles, but I had no idea he could make his opponent stop moving. Things might go differently if he takes on multiple people, but he'll almost never lose when it's one on one. I guess there's still much for you to learn about EP. My apologies. But in a battle between EP users, it's second nature for us. It's so deeply ingrained into us that we don't even think about it. No hard feelings. Just release me from your EP already! Oops, sorry, sorry. After finally being let go, Theo stands up and brushes the dirt off himself. Now, I see. This is how you fight with EP. I expected him to be furious, but I guess he's not taking this as hard as I thought he would. I have learned much from you, Julius. Thank you. Theo bows and holds, out his, holds his right hand out for a handshake. My, you made quite the recovery. You get right to the point, don't you? Julius responds by offering his own right hand. Then, just as they were about to shake... With a twist of his arm, Julius bends limply to the side for a second. Then, before he can realize what's happening, his body is laid out on the ground. <laughs> you let your guard down. <laughs> God, got him! Guess I got him around too. <laughs> Theo looks down on him with a sneer. If you can stop me by calling my name, then I just have to take the initiative. It certainly is a frightening ability, but it's not unbeatable. <laughs> Touche! You've got to be kidding me. Julia stands up and shakes the dirt off his clothes. That's right, even my ability... Me, even my ability. No, every ability has its weaknesses. You already understand how to fight an EP user, Theo. <laughs> With his name called, Theo instantly jumps about two meters back. <laughs> yeah, I'm like back up. Like, I am backdashing out of here. <laughs> like, just backdash out of here. Like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> nice! Good response! But don't be alarmed, I'm just congratulating you! Everyone, let's give Theo a round of applause! Prompted by Julius, both the harsh rakes and front tail students clap their hands. Hmm. Don't act like that was planned, you careless bastard. <clears throat> Professor Daring not so quietly grumbles to, to himself. Damn, it's already about an hour. I probably should stop. But I feel like I should just finish the chapter out. Oh, that's right. I won't get this one until I finish. Damn it! <laughs> I know what that one is. And my throat is getting scratchy too. Oh, let me think for a minute. Okay, I think I can finish this out. 
There's not a whole lot to go. <clears throat> Hello, Professor Celio. Hello, Brandon. Sorry for asking you asking you to go to your room so suddenly. No, no, it's fine. Part of a professor's job is to take care of its students. Professor Derek said something similar. You sure do have a lot of stuff in here. I do, don't I? I enjoy the liveliness of it. That's what you call it? Professor Derek was right about the contents of his room. I'm trying to figure out what this is a picture of. It looks like an antique store. I don't know. Don't care. The shelves are full of things like difficult looking books and lecture reference materials. Not to mention several novels. On top of the shelves are mysterious objects and things I could never even begin to imagine what they are used for. I was expecting all the books, but what is that? I choose one of the strange items at random and ask him about it. What are you looking at? Uh, oh, uh, is that a mirror? Some of it looks cheaply made, though. <laughs> I suppose you could say that. Huh? I'm not sure what to make of all this. I imagine you being the kind of person who likes to keep things organized. Are you surprised to find my room in such a state? Well, yeah. Can I ask why you have them? <laughs> Can I ask why you have them then? Hmm, I'm afraid that's a secret. I see. Why is it that when I look at all this junk, I get some kind of strange feeling? And I can't quite put my finger on what that feeling is, what that feeling exactly is. About the cards. What is it? Have you discovered something new about them? No, I was just wondering. Is it okay for me to be using them all the time? Ah, naturally you will get tired if you use them too much. Just tired? Nothing else? That's right. Under normal circumstances, exhausting your power won't kill you. Normal circumstances? Wait, normal circumstances? What should I do when I get tired? A good, ni a good night's rest will do the trick, just like with physical strength. Well, that's simple enough. But if you rely on them too much, you may not be able to use them when they're needed most. When they're needed the most. You must be very careful. And I will. Yeah, it... How do they call it? I mean, I guess... It all lies in the same thing. EP lies all lies in the same thing. Like, mutant powers. Uh, what was it? Yu Yu Hakusho's spirit energy. Spirit and demon energy. I think Dragon Ball has the same thing as well. Like, Dragon Ball has the same concept as well. Julius. What do you think of Julius? Hmm. I get the feeling he could be trouble. Trouble? He has a firm ideal in his mind on how to, of how to be a knight. I thought that too, but what's so bad about that? When he sees the side of knights that, op that opposes his ideal, I'm afraid he's going to be quite disappointed. Are you saying there's a darker side to being a knight? Well, as president of the Knights College, there's not much I can say on the matter. However, nothing is perfect. Knights are no exception, Brandon. If you hold too tightly to that ideal image, there are heavy repercussions when it is, when it is shattered. It can be okay in moderation, but I'm a bit worried about Julius. Oh, that is a life lesson, kids. <laughs> Let me capture that one. If you hold too tightly to that ideal dim image, 
there are heavy repercussions when it is shattered. It can be okay in moderation. <laughs> and I'll just stop. Like, I'm gonna record that, have that there, and then just play that. Hmm. That said, he is an excellent candidate to become a, to become a knight. His strength is unparalleled, especially in combat. Knights often put themselves in dangerous situations, and you wouldn't want to be weak then, right? Ugh. But I'm not the greatest fighter. Neither am I, but that's okay. We're all needed somewhere. I mean, look at me. I'm the president of a college. I feel better hearing that from you. Place where I'm needed. Maybe the cards will help me find that. I have a feeling like there was going to be a, like a silly old relationship, but it got canceled. <clears throat> if you'll excuse me, I should be leaving soon. Oops. If you'll excuse me, I should be leaving soon. Goodbye, Brandon. He didn't find the secret. Say, like, what was that? Nothing? <laughs> oh, Oscar! Hey, Brandon. He's not going out? Alright. Let's start with novel. How's that novel you let me read coming along? I'm feeling pretty good about it. I fixed the part you pointed out and now I think it's much better. Oh, well I hope you'll let me read it again later. Of course. That reminds me, I'm not very good at fencing, right? Academics aren't particularly my strong suit either. Hmm? I guess, but what's your point? Well, I was just wondering why this college accepted me. It's because you're an amazing writer, isn't it? You don't get accepted here just for that. For some reason, it just doesn't feel right. Just because I won a prize for my writing doesn't mean I'll make a great night. I'll make a great night, does it? So I was thinking, what was the main reason I was accepted? I'm not sure. But you can't be a knight if you're just good at fencing. Your character, motiva your character, motivation, and potential for EP matter too. All sorts of people have become knights. You wouldn't be here if that weren't the case. Brandon. Besides, you took the entry exam, right? Don't doubt yourself. It's rude to the people who failed if you question your passing grade. You're right. I got accepted because I wanted it. So, I need to work as hard as I can. Thank you, Brandon. With all the amazing students around me, I guess it got, I got a bit nervous. I've thought the same thing with him being so obviously far behind everyone else. Besides, I don't mean to sound full of myself, but I didn't even take the exam. I wouldn't know about it. I wouldn't know about that. No, oh, well. There's no point in worrying about it now. All that matters is he's here now. It's his duty to become the best knight he can. You can do it, Oscar! Huh? Uh, oh, uh, thanks. But this is a library? You should be quiet. We finally have permission to leave campus. Don't you want to get out? That doesn't mean I have to, have to today. We can whenever we want, right? Besides, my novel is top my top priority with all the inspiration I've been getting lately. If I don't make use of it now, it'll go to waste. I see. Well, do you want to go out with me some other time? Sure, let's walk around the island when the weather's nice. Is there anywhere you'd like to go? This island is so small that just going to one place wouldn't kill enough time. You think so? But I guess it's... I guess just wandering around would be a nice change of pace. Yeah, you're right. What do you think about going for a swim at the beach? I'll pass. The sea isn't very calm around here. It isn't? That's too bad. 
I'd like to swim too if I got the chance. I wish the water was calmer. Professor Silio's tattoo is still bothering me. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking about it too. Maybe he's simply hiding it because he's embarrassed? What if he used to be a delinquent? He was all he was all for it back then, but now he's ashamed. What? Professor Cilio? He doesn't seem like that kind of guy. Maybe he felt bad and mended his ways. People can change. I myself used to be a bit of a troublemaker. Really? Well, actually I spent all my time reading in my room. You still do, don't you? I can't help it. It's hard for people to change. Doesn't that contradict what you just said a second ago? Uh, oh. I never thought you'd beat me in an argument. Well done, Brandon. You did all the work. It was self-destruction. <laughs> oh, right. oh yeah, can I ask you something I've been curious about? What? Is there any difference between the nobles of Frontail and Harsh Rage? Harsh Rage? God, I can't. Hmm. Well, our class system our systems are pretty much the same, but their personalities are a bit different. Their personalities. Frontail is full of fertile land, so the nobles lease it to commoners and live off the rent and wheat they grow. It's difficult to grow crops crops and harsh range, barren mountains, so most nobles run things like mercenary companies. Mercenaries. That's at least part of the reason why I think nobles from harsh rates are usually more gruff than those from Frontail. I see. So even personalities can change with the land. And that's about it. <laughs> See you later, Oscar. All right, and be quiet. It's a library. We haven't finished yet. You can't be getting tired. I haven't exhausted this. <coughs> I leave campus and decide to take a walk around Craig Island. But since I couldn't get Grant or Oscar to come, I'm all alone. It's been a while since I was out, and the sky seems wider than usual from the, sen from the sense of freedom I feel. A salty breeze is a nice bonus, too. Uh oh? Hmm. Theo? Are you out for a walk, too? What do you want, peasant king? Jeez, <coughs> <coughs> oh, stop. Stop it. What do you want, peasant king? I'm already completely used to him calling me that. But for some reason, he seems to be in a bit... He seems to be in the worse mood than usual. Oh yeah, gotta complete the game! <laughs> Alright. I should keep an eye on him. You know what they say, pride comes before the fall. Why are you following me? Huh? Uh, I was heading this way too. Liar! It's true, I just have some things to do over there. Well, if that's the case, I'm turning around. Ah, I just remembered I have things to do that way too. Fine, I won't follow you. Hmm, you better not. <sighs> Lying is hard when I'm not. I'm not used to doing it. I needed this card.
He shouldn't worry about losing to Julius. I'm not particularly bothered by it. He cheated. No one could beat that. Besides, you managed to get a hit in afterwards. I told you, I don't give a damn! It's written all over your face. When it comes to life and death, there's no such thing as cheating. You say I got a hit in, but I should have been dead before I had the chance. Well, it was just training. You're not going to die from that. Just training, huh? <laughs> just training, huh? Hmm? Why is he taking it so seriously? Uh, we won't find out because you gotta because <laughs> you gotta beat the game. You gotta finish the story. <laughs> All right, I'll go, but don't let it get to you, okay? What are you talking about? Well, at least he doesn't look like he's going to throw himself off a cliff. I'm getting a bit tired. I'll take a break in my room. I have to take a break soon. I can't believe what happened during training. You mean how Theo got his ass handed to him? Hey, be quiet. He might be listening. So what? It's true, right? Actually, I wanted to talk about Julius, not Theo. About his EP. About his EP. Yeah, it's been on my mind. It's pretty brutal. You can't do anything once he stops you. Is there some way to avoid it? Like, what if you covered your ears? It couldn't be that simple, could it? I don't know. What about those earplugs you have? Oh yeah! I bet you couldn't hear him yell if you had those. But Julius has such a strong voice. Hmm. I guess they wouldn't do any good if he's that loud. When you think of it that way, it really is the perfect ability for him. Okay. <sighs> oh. They're all. <laughs> oh no! I think Celio's the safe one. But still. <laughs> I'll do Julius again. Should I invite Julius? Maybe I should have fought back a little more. Another tiring day. Good night, Grant! During today's free time, I find myself thinking about Professor Celio. What are all those things in his room? And what about that tattoo? I'm really curious, but he doesn't seem to want to talk about them. What should I do? What should I do? <laughs> As I walk around campus, while lost in thought, I bump into someone in the training hall. <laughs> Oh, if it isn't Brandon! Julius. What's wrong? Why the long face? I'm making a long face? You didn't know? That look on your face says something's troubling you. Really? I would be more than happy to help. Tell me what's on your mind. Well... You have to go with doubt. None of these make sense, but... You have to go with doubt. The truth is, I decided to talk to him about the things that I was thinking about. 
I tell him about Professor Silio and the tattoo. He listens in silence, but with curiosity. I see. Professor Silio, huh? Even I don't know that much about him. He seems like a good person, but now I'm not so sure. That just makes me want to look into the villain's tattoo even more. Hmm. Now that you told me about it, I've gotten curious as well. I know. Let's sneak into his room, Brandon. What? S sneak? I may not seem like it, but I'm quite good at picking locks. I can at least get the door open for you. Why do you know how to do that? No, more importantly, we can't just break into his room. You've been talking about him so much that now I want to know too. Come now. Come on. Let's go! Come on, come on! Let's go! T to the professor's room! It's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> hmm, that was easier than I thought. I can't believe we're actually doing this. Using two wires, Julius had the door to Professor Cilio's room unlocked in no time. Why do you know how to do that? If you want to be a knight who smites evil, you must learn evil's tricks. That seems dangerous. But whether I like it or not, we're, we're in. I might as well get some information now that I'm here. Hmm, you aren't lying about the piles of junk in here. Hmm. Just like before, it gives me a strange feeling. Why does it feel so familiar? I've never seen any of this before. That reminds me. I've been wondering about this shelf. I point to the shelf in one of the corners. For some reason, that's the only one covered by a sheet of cuff. Alright, let's take a look. Uh, with no time to stop him, he yanks the sheet back. I guess it was my fault for making him want to investigate. What's this? <laughs> the shelves are lined with Rico the Traveling Knight series of books. And not only that, wh what? The name of the author is Marcelo de, de Q. Du Q, I guess that's the name. <laughs> I guess that's the name. I've never, I don't know. Ah, okay. Several certificates and awards with the same name are lined up in a row. Is this real? What? Tell me what's going on here. Uh, isn't it obvious? Doesn't this mean Professor Celio is the author of Rico the Traveling Knight? What? What's that? You don't know? It's only the most famous knight novel series in the world. Hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. I think I've heard of that. Now I remember. He's the knight who does the thing. He has no idea what I'm talking about. But now I know for sure. All the junk in here are things that appeared in Rico. That's why it all felt so familiar. But since when was Professor Cilio an author? Maybe he's hiding it. Why? If you wrote a really famous series, wouldn't you want to be the... <clears throat> if you wrote a really famous series, wouldn't you want to let the whole world know your amazing achievement? Maybe that means we've got the wrong guy. But if that's true, why are these things here and not with the real author? It wouldn't make sense. Hmm. Look, someone's coming! What? Those footsteps! They're Professor Cilios. It sounds like he's returning to his room. Did you remember to lock the door? Footsteps. I don't hear anything. You like training, my friend. You must even train your ears if you want to be a knight. How do you train your ears? <laughs> Let's get out of here, Brandon. <laughs> what should I do? Run, but... Um, can we stay in here for a bit longer? What are you saying? 
He's almost here! I want to... No, I must learn more about Professor Celio. Uh, what's gotten into you? Uh... I doubt saying it's simply because I'm a fan of his work will convince him. Maybe he's got some important secret information. In other words, you're suggesting the professor is a spy who might be up to no good! Huh? The Knights College is in danger? And you want to catch him red-handed here? Y yeah, if he, if he is one, he might do irreversible damage. Understood. I shall handle this. Hmm? Julius grabs me by the arm, and before I know it, we're surrounded by total darkness. There's a lot of clothes being hung here, and there's a faint scent of mothballs. This must be a closet. Be very quiet, Brandon. We'll, ca we'll catch him here from... We'll watch... Dang it. <laughs> Glad that's the end of the chapter. Be very quiet, Brandon. We'll watch from here. We'll watch him from here. Uh, okay. We huddle together in the small closet. Hearing the door open, it seems Professor Cilio has returned. I can carefully peek through the gap in the door. Did you remember to lock the door back, Julius? Hmm. As he come in, as he comes in, he opens the sealed letter in his hand with a small knife. Good grief. After reading it, he just throws it on he just throws it on his desk. Ugh. He sits down in his rocking chair with a tired look on his face. Then closes his eyes as he sways back and forth. It seems like something's bothering him. What was that letter about? No clue. I talk with Julius in a whisper. I don't want us to be found, so I keep my voice as low as possible. Hmm. But this closet smells kind of sweaty. This isn't because of Professor Celio's clothing. It's Julius, who had been sweating in the training hall earlier. It's getting pretty hard to hide in here. What's wrong? Nothing. I put the stench out my mind and keep my eyes on Professor Celio's movements. The professor gets up from his rocking chair and picks up the phone. Hello. Yes, it's been a while, Editor-in-Chief. I have received your letter. Editor? Hmm? You were promoted? How nice. Congratulations. That wasn't sarcasm, I assure you. Please take no offense. I told you, I am not writing a sequel. I am done with Rico the Traveling Knight. He said Rico! Hmm? Yes, yes, I understand. Readers are important to me as well. But still, I will not write another novel. How many times must I tell you? Please respect my reasons for ending it. No, I should be the one apologizing. I may have been a bit cold. I'm sorry. Yes, let's go out for drinks again, but no talking about my novels this time. Sure, goodbye. With a soft clunk, he hangs up the receiver. I don't have an old phone anymore, so I can't do that. <laughs> so I can't make that kind of sound. Ah. <sighs> Then he sits back down in his chair and rocks back and forth with a more sullen expression than before. Why is he so against writing a sequel? So, I guess this means he's not a spy. Doesn't seem like it. I'm glad we cleared that up. Hmm. Well, I'm glad that crisis has been averted, but there's still one problem. We can't get out of here until he leaves the room, right? Let's be patient. He can't stay in here forever. Forever. <laughs> but after about ten minutes... <laughs> but after about ten minutes, he still hasn't left. 
In fact, he seems far from doing so. His eyes are still closed, and he, and he keeps rocking away in the same position. He hasn't fallen asleep, though. Every once in a while, he scratches his head. What is he doing? <clears throat> Getting out of here isn't going to be easy. Hmm. You have no choice but to stay put. Another ten minutes passed and still no movement. Hmm. This is starting to get a bit dicey. The two of us are crammed in here with his huge bur with his huge burly body. And the poor ventilation in here makes the smell of his sweat even worse. I stink, don't I? No. Come on, even I can tell. Well, maybe a little. I knew it. He sounds apologetic as he sniffs his shirt. But, but you can't help it. Hmm. Besides, I don't really mind. Hmm. Really? Yeah, so don't worry about it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I may have said that out of concern for him, but he really does stink. <sighs> No, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> hmm. For some reason, I put my hands on his arm in his armpits. <laughs> his body jolts up. Where do you think you're going to? What do you think you're touching? I don't know. I'm just bored. That's no reason to do that. I was. I just about scream. <laughs> Sorry. What if Professor Silio hears us? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, huh? When we get to it, huh? What? Look out the door. Hmm? What the? He's gone. We open the door and go back out. Sure enough, there's no sign of there's no sign of Professor Cilio. I guess he left without us knowing. Oh, oh, freaky. It's a miracle he didn't suddenly open his closet without realizing we're in here. <laughs> we were in there. <laughs> we, the thought of that happening fills me with terror. Thank goodness he just up and left. He knows you were in there. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> he are, we should get out of here before he comes back. Right. And so, Professor Celio's, so we left Professor Celio's room behind us. Then, the next day, Professor Celio called Julius and I to his room. <laughs> Bust it! Do you know why I've asked you to come here? Hmm... So you did notice us? Of course I did. I didn't say anything because I had some business to take care of. But I know when I am being watched. I'm sorry. Before you apologize, can you please tell me why you were hiding in my room? Well... Julius gives a brief explanation of what happened yesterday. I see. So it was about Rico the Traveling Knight, hmm? It's true. I am the author. He tells us who, who he is in a he tells us who he is in a surprisingly frank way. I've been hiding it until now, but I was just beginning to think about making it public. Why did you hide it in the first place? I didn't want people to look at me from a biased viewpoint. I am here to be president, not a novelist. I could cause many problems for the college if it was discovered. However, the past can't stay buried forever. Keeping it that way would limit what I can teach. And now that the aspiring novelist Oscar has enrolled, I thought now would be a good time to reveal who I am. I was wondering about that. How did he get into the college even though he himself says he's not cut out to be a knight? Ah. That's partly because of my own personal feelings. I wanted him to follow in my footsteps. 
And that's what I thought. He thinks high, he thinks very highly of Oscar. Is that because he sympathizes with, with him as a fellow novelist? To say he is my successor would be a bit of an exaggeration, but what is written about knights is also very important. Sorry. It has a strong influence on how society views them, you know. Just like with me idolizing Rico, now that I think about it, that does make sense. That novel's impact is huge. You said on the phone yesterday that you aren't writing anymore. Why did you stop? It's quite simple, really. I just don't feel any inspiration here. The ideas I have for Rico were mostly gained through my experiences while traveling for my nightly duties. Nightly duties. Experiences. So Rico was based on Professor Cilio himself. The things I could write about when I was a knight were endless. But there's almost nothing now that I am tied to this island as, pre as the president. So I decided not to drag it out any longer and quit writing. So, so the tattoo on your left hand. Why of all things is it the one thing Rico's killing? Why of all things is it the one... Is it the one we... Ah. I am tired. <laughs> so, so the tattoo on your left hand. Why of all things is it the one on Rico's, the one Rico's killer had? Ah, because it was my own reasons that I ended Rico. As I said before, becoming president has tied me to the college. When it comes down to it, that was my own decision. As the author, I was much, I was as much of a killer. As Rico's murderer. I felt pretty guilty about it, so I got the tattoo as punishment. It serves as my atonement for Rico. It's one it's my way of apologizing for ending for ending it for such selfish reasons. Hmm. Allow me to explain it in a slightly different way. The man the man is the author himself, in other words, a metaphor. I am him and he is me. That is why I have his tattoo. Do you think that's strange? But to me, it's important for dealing with the guilt of ending the series. You feel guilty? I see. So when I saw you in the chapel, you were making a confession? Yes, that's correct. How perceptive of you, Brandon. Now I finally understand why he was there. So... Are you going to tell the other students about your true identity? Yes, I will speak to them soon. That's why I'm being honest with you now. I see. I was afraid you'd make us disappear after all this. What are you talking about? You are my precious students. I can kill you at any time. <laughs> That's right! <laughs> Was Julius still suspecting him of being a spy? Ah, oh, yes. I wanted to ask you a question now that you're here, Brandon. W what? Is Oscar writing a novel? I would love to know if he is. Hmm. Why don't you talk to him yourself? He's a huge fan of Rico, too. So I'm sure he'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. Well, I have spoken to him a few times with the intention of bringing it up. But I was just too embarrassed to do so. Well, yeah, I do remember seeing him talk to Oscar in the chapel. Maybe he wanted to talk to Oscar about his novel then. That's okay. Oscar is Oscar's writing. Actually, you said he's getting a ton of inspiration since coming here. Really? That's wonderful. I'm sure he's going to be a much better writer than I. Professor Celio smiles with heartfelt happiness. Now then, that's all I have to explain. Do you have any other questions? No. Me neither. You may return to your rooms then. Keep working hard at your studies. Yes, sir! I will! Wow. I can't believe he actually admitted it. Mm-hmm. But I think he wasn't trying too hard to hide it. If he seriously wanted to, he definitely would have been more thorough. 
True, he's the kind of person who could do that if he wanted. Perhaps we were too hasty in finding out his secret. Yeah, and now I'm starting to feel a little bad about it. What? Even he seemed glad. Huh? He looked relieved not to have to worry about revealing it now that we know. Y you think so? Let's just assume that's how it is, shall we? Uh... <laughs> hmm. Julius can, be, Julius can be a bit pushy sometimes, but he's a fun guy to be around. As for Professor Cilio, he's been cleared of all suspicion. On the contrary, I found out he's Rico's author. I can't believe the author of the series I loved so much as a kid is the president of my college. What a strange coincidence. It's so odd, yet it makes me extremely happy. I want to hear more about Rico someday. Hopefully Oscar can come along too. <sighs> I'm so glad I came to this college. To be, able to, th to be able to think so makes me truly happy. Oh. Maybe I should limit myself to like 45 minutes or something. I did get tired. At the, I, I'm i being honest, I did get tired at the end. But I can tell you, well, yeah, my likability got up that high. Yep. Oh, and chapter four, my favorite one. Oh. But that'll be for another time. You'll get to you'll get to know who that person is next week. I'm done for now. I am dead tired. I can't I can't keep going like this. I will see you guys for the last chapter I can do. I, the last chapter I can legitimately do as per the author's instructions. Until then, see you next Friday evening for another night's college chapter. <laughs>